Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith, and this is Lead Screwed Part Two. All right, um, we're out here, and we're we're getting ready to hook up our lead to put a test, and that'll be another video down the road. But I had just received um, a text from Mike in New York, and he's already got his mill, his Cincinnati mill, back together and super pleased with the lead screw and he can't believe that the amount of bend that was put into the screw at that point and uh because it was it was really hard coming out of the the, the set of nuts he had and everything else he told me that this after the fact that he put it back in and just he he had pulled it out and he thought that it was really extremely worn in the middle and and not so much at the ends like most of the wear on a mill and everything else Besides the point, he knows that I like to walk the talk, and and if I know something to be factual, then then I want to share that as well. And uh, and I was wrong that uh, in my guesstimation that they lifted it with a strap and bent it <laughs> because he sent me this po this picture, and uh, and there you can see the mill is carefully placed in the back of a moving truck and uh, <laughs> the picture kind of says it all of how the lead screw got bent and uh, it, it's amazing that somebody thought that they could actually put the the mill in the back of the truck and put a couple of them spring tension bars across there and hold the load um, but so Mike shared that picture with us and wanted the truth to go along with the walk to talk so I'm sharing that with you all right now let's get back to straightening that shaft okay good dinner and then we took a ride down we had to look at some fencing that was being put up down there I'm doing some fencing in the backyard and and I wanted to look at uh, uh, some of the materials and anyhow all right so we're back here four 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 hundred thousands was our travel and 25 thousandths was basically what we had for run out and we checked it here and here and it's still a gradual bend and uh, so let's go ahead and we'll slide that back out of the way and we'll get back up on here and and our line was was right there all right and, <clears throat> Okay, we believe that that was, that's where we needed to go. Okay. Okay, there's our zero. One. Two. Three. Four. And four was starting to move it, so let's go 450. All right. Better to be a little on the cautious side, I think. Meow. Meow. What you doing? Huh? You coming to say hi to everybody? Huh? Well, give me it. All right. There you go. Say hi, everybody. <laughs> huh? What are you doing? Huh? You know we're checking the run out on this. Huh? What do you see? You see ten thousands? Ooh, baby! <laughs> Did you catch a mouse or anything last night, or were you just out for nothing? We actually are about eight, 18 thousandths there. Um, our high did roll just a little bit. Went back to the other side, not, not 180. I'm at the other side of the line, about 20% there. Okay, right, right there. Uh, 
Okay. Our zero zero mark is starting to change here. Still pretty close, but it's actually almost we're almost running zero right here. Okay. There's the high. There's our high. That was on high. We're pretty close to the same high right there. All right. Um, and that, we're going to shoot for that again, right there. And we're going to move this one in a little bit. It's moving in I'm not gonna code quite as much we uh we took 450 there one two three Okay, after that last uh, push there, we got this area down about 10, uh, 10, 11, 12 in that area right there, and it kind of like follows the same thing over to here. All right, let's let's go to, to that end there because what I found is is right here, I've got about 35 right here. right on that spot I got like zero right here <clears throat> and let's go off to the end there uh, and I'm gonna turn this indicator around so that you can see two indicators here one off the end one at that point okay we got this indicator upside down on the bottom and we have this one up on the top here okay so they'll read minus on both at the same time and plus at the same time even though they're opposite uh, you mean the bend is the opposite. All right. Whoop. We got a little bit ahead of ourselves here. Okay. There's zero. There's 35 up there. And we're running about 50, 52 thousands right out here at the end. <clears throat> okay. So we want to go ahead and we want to support it here. And we want to push the bend that we believe is right there at the high. Uh, and take that one try to take that one out before we come to a conclusion that we need to add a little bit more or bend the end of this rod in relationship to that bearing point there so it's kind of I, I just want to we're we're happy medium down that way we got one radical bend right here and that, now we want to go ahead and try to push that out of there before we do anything on the end here and if we have to do anything on the end here we may be mounting our uh, gear cog on here because we don't want to stretch or distort this area right in here because there's a pinhole and a gap right there that's why okay here again I got my indicator set at zero here I'm uh, just touching here holding the bar it's leaning out there I have my one support that's under that zero area there this is my zero area here that was the high spot that I got pushed there and then here is uh, an indicator I'm going to put right here at the end so I can watch what this is going to raise up in relationship to this Now I knew that this was 50 thousands running out. So half of that would be 25 Okay, so 25 would be you know if I pressed it and stayed at 25 then then theoretically that would be it if it relaxes back to 25 um, We'll be surprised all right.
Did you see that? When I first pressed it, it went minus because it was putting the whole, putting pressure down on everything together. And we just went past the hundred thousands on the push, but we're right back up to zero here. Now we're starting to go plus 10 here. We're still only like 130. We're just kind of like analyzing what we're doing here as far as our physical pushing here. But I'm gonna push this all the way to 25 at least for the first trip here. Okay, we got 150 there. We're at 15 here. There's 25. If I relax it slightly, where do I go? And we come back down to our... That was our zero. Okay. We know we want at least 25 on that, and uh, we got we got a set set a standard <clears throat> or a regular where we went, where we're gonna start. Let's <clears throat> let's see if our theory helped us out at all. <laughs> it, it looks good down at that end. Okay, uh, that's all I can say. All right. That's that's where that high spot was. Okay, we took we took that 35 and we just made it 11 and from that side of the keyway to that side of the keyway are pretty close to being on it awesome what have we got on the end here we got 22 on the end we took half of what was out here at the end and a little less than a little bit more than half here all right I'm gonna do that same press again okay I got it set up here again and instead of right here on this blue line we're on that side of the keyway uh, still same position back here same position right here came in and just touched I'm um, uh, uh, 40 uh, on uh, different on the push right now um, I set indicator at zero here and we're gonna go ahead and and we're gonna bring it on up. We know that we went at least 130, 140 um, on the revolution. We're gonna see where we where we go on this uh, indicator here. Okay, there's our hundred. And uh, 130, and here we are. We're right about the 25. <clears throat> And uh, and we knew that it didn't stick at the 25. Let's take it to 35. 35, and that's 160 on the travel there. All right, let's see where we're going here now. I'm about 10 there. I'm nine thousands right there. Almost exactly. This, let's see. Okay, there's the low. There's 
There's the low. They're not quite straight from each other. Pretty close, but not quite. All right. That's pretty awesome. I, I'm within I'm within ten thousandths on on the whole rod right now. I believe. Where are we at in here? No. Okay, that's reading about thirty. What are we reading here? We expected some change. There's twenty. There's twenty. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna map this out. I'm going to go ahead and map it out from that end of this end here. And we're going to go for uh, another straightening in the midsection there. That was extreme. That was a lot. That was a lot to take out of that little area right there. But that is pretty watching that turn down there at that end. Okay, here we are at this end again. Good, right? <laughs> uh, all right, let's see if we can take some of that center bow out of there before we concentrate on this again. There is a little, there's, there is a little bow or bend in, in this area right in here, and we can still see that, but um, we got most of that bend out of that lead screw the threads themselves, that threaded area. All right. Okay, I was waiting for uh, film to transfer over and I, I did a few more pressings in this area right here and I actually got the entire lead screw all the way down that way to be within about, oh, five to six. It has a couple areas where it might be uh, a little heavier and I think there's like, it like gets in here and it might be like real close to, to nine, okay? Um, but, uh, this, this is running pretty, pretty, uh, true, but this end piece right here now is where we have the most run out here. So, um, I'll just run this to zero here and we're about 40 there. So we're going to set this up so that we can, we can support it here and here and, and give a press. All right. Now with, uh, that's our low side. So what we're going to do is we're going to want to be pressing down on this this point right here. Okay, we're going to want to support it here and over there. So let's go, let's go uh, give that a shot right there. All right, um, <laughs> we got that within a little out here at the end. It might even be a little bit more. It, it increases. I can see that it's. A little bit more. Okay, we've got about 15 thousands there. Let's see. No. Yeah, pretty close. 14, 14 thousands right there. All right. I think, um, I think I'm going to take a break for the night. And we'll come back out here in the morning and get a fresh start on it. All right, I've jumped in here for a quickie here because I've lost a, a scene where we're doing a procedure here, but uh, it, no catastrophe. You're going to get to see that procedure in the next scene here. Uh, we were at the hydraulic press, and what we had was we had uh, a, a sweep throughout the center arc that was, we got it down to uh, a, a minimum, and we had a dog leg at the, at the bearing and handle in. And we got that down to a minimum. And now we want to take another setup. And, and we created a setup here in the lathe. What we did is we turned a ring that slips over the threaded area so we can run a steady rest on it. We held that in place by tie wire on both sides. Then we had the rest of the piece that we parted off and machined that ring off of. We drilled into it for clearance for the end of the handle. And the bearing diameter, we reamed that hole so we had a perfect hole 
running true with that bearing diameter and we stuck the lead screw into that reamed hole on the bearing diameter so it was nice and snug and tight and of course our lead screw did run out and we pulled that over and put the center in place lightly snug that up and we actually were sandwiching that in and we finished pushing the rest of that ream fit into the hole we uh, positioned our steady rest where we wanted and left it rolling freely in here and we heated the lead screw red hot we brought in our points of our steady rest until we were running true we kept the heat on it for a minute more and then we let it cool down and run in the lathe all right and then after it cooled down here we go okay i'm getting ready to pull this out of here this is uh, memorial day the following day uh, we went ahead and let this sit here while we were doing some garden and yard and chores and all that stuff there um so i thought i'd go ahead and play with this a little bit this morning because it's raining and everybody's sleeping in and um all right i backed off the steady rest and i i've taken my tie wire off the uh the slug here so that i could take the slug and i can slide it along here at different areas because it actually gives you a very good indication of uh, seeing the run out and i got you in at an angle here and i think you'll be able to see it so i'm gonna fire it off and you can see that it's actually moving oh maybe about five thousands right there you slide it right on over here right there it's virtually not moving at all it looks like it's perfectly zero right there just a thou or two there thou or two there very little there about five six six about five there this actually rides on the diameter as well we're down to a couple almost running perfect there okay we can probably straighten this out in the center here uh, but right now we want to go ahead and we want to pull this out of here and we want to check this this end here uh, just to make sure that uh, or check and see how we've changed it and what it's running because r this bearing diameter here and the rest of this shaft down in here where the controls are off the end and where the handles are over here that's that's what we're really trying to get to run smooth so when this is mounted in in the mill or the machine that it's going into <clears throat> that the the control ends of this are running perfect and this lead screw section right here can run out a couple thousands in here without affecting this lead is actually traveling forward and back okay so it's i mean it can have it, it can have a, a a slight bit of run out i mean most of them do anyway because this machine work of this keyway along the whole side is stress relieved it and it has a little bit of a whip in it on the average anyway um okay let's uh let's try let's just pull this thing out of here <clears throat> okay she's not wanting to come out of there um all right let's grab a hammer which hammer should we use okay we need some swinging room so let's lift this off okay we're not going to use any of those hammers down there what we're going to use is our slide hammer all right our slide hammer is a pretty good chunk of material and it has a center bar with a threaded adapter we have we have several adapters that we've made over a period of time and this one here happens to be half inch and that's what's in the threads in here so <clears throat> we're going to screw this in here we got good contact in there we're not going to we're not going to snug it or tighten it down there if anything ever snaps off or breaks we want something that's loose in there left hand drill bit or whatever we can to get that out of there 
All right. <clears throat> now also to the, you know, this thing says wear safety glasses. And I think that's if you happen to happen to get too close and this thing hits you in the face, you want to make sure that uh, you got eye protection in there. Okay. Now we put the steady rest up there in the middle. All this weight is actually hanging on that shaft right now. But we're going to be holding up here and we're going to take and we're going to be pulling back and we're going to be drawing that out of the hole. All right, you want to be looking at this end or do you want to look at that end? We'll give you both. <laughs> All right, here we go. Very nice. All right. And we're just going to stick that right back in there just for a second. So just so that we can undo one of these threads in here. <laughs> Monkey zero football. <laughs> football three. There we go. And we have the shaft. Okay, we brought this back over to the press and we're sitting up here where we're, it's pretty close to where that major part of the bend is on that side there. And we're, of course we're running zero on our rollers right here. And then this is the other end of that, that, that diameter there. Let me get, uh, the thread was hitting the end there. Okay, you can see we're moving about we're moving about three thousandths there. As soon as that thread doesn't hit there. Okay. All right. And we're a couple thousandths here. I'm happy with with our straightening that we did right here. We are running acceptable right in that area there. Okay. Now right here, we're running about seven. And, and that's just that's no more than that step down right there and then out here at this end we're running about 25 okay so we're gonna reset this in the lathe and we're gonna put the steady rest right here we're gonna heat right here and we're gonna put the center in right here and we're gonna stress relieve this end so that it'll match the rest of <clears throat> the rest of this this bearing support the, the cog position and the handle with the spring load and everything else gets on here. This is the retainer bolt for this end for the handle. All right. And then we'll have the handle running true with the rest of the shaft. Now back in this area right here, we've got about eight thousandths of run out in the middle of the shaft. And then there's a couple that are five. And over on that side of the, the ram coming down, we're less than five. And re the rest of it running out that way, the rest were less than five. So we're chasing this off the end here. And uh, we're going to go put it in the lathe right now.
Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and, and we're gonna we're gonna set up the steady rest here. I've got the steady rest kind of in the position I need it. Um, we may be rubbing out here though, that's the problem. So I may actually have to come right in here on this side of, of that opening, um, which is no big deal. Alright, and <clears throat> let's go ahead and see how she's running. Now you can see this rocking back and forth between here and there. So this is running true now, this is running out. This is running out here, but I gotta get this in here to where I'm actually starting to touch here. And the same thing in on this side here before I release this. Because I need to be following almost true or center with this. Okay, we like that. Okay, now we're gonna back we're gonna back out our center. We want the shaft and this to run through, and we're gonna be heating that spot there and then stress relieving that nub on the end to run through with this. Okay, got my torch here. Alright, now we're just going to heat right at that point right there. This is running through, so we're going to try to keep the heat right down in this area right here. Yes, we do go through cam rollers time to time because they, they, they can only handle so much heat. Now you can see the smoke coming out of inside the threads is heating up down in that area there. This is like a hollow tube here. We're going to focus some right in that, on that right in that area right there okay we're pretty sure of ourselves there we're gonna bring this in to help lock that in all right now we let it run keeping it hot okay now we let it we let it cool right there and roll Every once in a while you check your tension because as that cools it actually shrinks and then uh, it will pull away from the center. This will probably take out 90% of that and if it does then this, this lead screw is going to be in really good shape to go back into uh, the machine. Okay, we're going to let that cool down, continue to run. Okay, we moved our steady rest back and we increased our speed here. We laid down some uh, claws on our ways there and we're going to take an emery strip here and we're just going to polish up those surfaces now and uh, start doing a preliminary fit on that uh, gear cog, making sure that um, all of our straightening and stuff has got to uh, maintains that fit on there. <laughs>
All right, we're going to get our wire wheel so that we can get down and take the coloration out of uh, the uh, the threads themselves and the keyway there. And that looks pretty good. We're gonna we're gonna get in and make sure that that's not a, a faulty burr hanging up right there um, when they drilled that. That looks real nice. It's still it's still pretty hot. Actually, our center's already shrinking back from there, um, so it is still in the cool down stage. Okay, we mounted the uh, the bearing and hand feed cog that's all one piece here and this is uh this is the choice bearing that's been on there rust pitted some screwdriver marks and that's what we have in on the side of here is some pecker tracks from screwdrivers over the years and stuff like that um what we're going to show you here now is because that that was bent i mean this was where it was pivoting on the bearing all right and of course come over here on the side this is hollow in here okay about an inch so that goes in about an inch right there so there's only a little tiny bit of space right here okay and then this thickness right here is it's only a minute amount of thickness there but that pressure of bending that lead screw deflected this wall here and is kicking that cog like this okay now i'm going to spin it here manually by hand first and you'll see it rolling pretty true and then it just takes like a 2000s little whip on that one side right there um, just kind of characteristics to the whole shaft is setting up but that's pretty darn close to be there on the on the bearing diameter all right now we're going to go ahead and kick it with some speed here okay now you can see this face wobble and this face wobble and that's telling me that that is bent. You can see a nice running true shaft, fairly running true here, fairly running through here. True enough that where if this wasn't wobbling, we'd have a good product. All right. Okay, we, uh, we slipped the bearing back on here and then we're measuring over the bearing in our cog and we're measuring each one of these and we're getting a difference we're getting a difference so and they're varying so we said hey let's take let's take and set this up so that we can spin this so that should be going true with the axis of the bearing even though that bearing is messed up um and with this with <clears throat> little tiny balls clint we we know that the bearing is not the best quality but it still is spinning true okay um so let's go ahead and let's put our indicator down on here on one of these here it doesn't matter which one because we're going to go around and we'll go ahead and we're just going to go around and we're going to get a good feel of them first off we want to make sure our plunger is pretty pretty square up and down okay okay this looks like the this looks like a low one here which is said zero there okay next one we're about three next one we're ten next one I'm gonna say 15 now we're starting to come back down
got here. We're about a half a thousandth tight, but I think I can flap or wheel that in there. All right, we're finally happy and content. I got this. I got this bearing to where it rides here. Okay, on this, I got the cogs flipped on the end here, and we've got the bearing over here. So this barely fits on the press like this. All right, but there shows you the the finished as released. I'm uh, I'm running about five right here on the end of uh, the cog here and uh, I'm running actually if I got I'm on the roller shoe that I'm within two between here and here on on the shaft about four here and I'm running about five or six in the middle here on the lead screw and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it right there this is a very usable lead screw now and uh, so I just want to give a quick spin here before I wrap this up and send it back to New York okay and here's one shot of it spinning without the cog on it you can see how nice and true that end is now this was this is about 30 34 thousands or so I forget where, where we were when we first started here but it was so close to this end right here that it was a bend in here and then a bend that way there and by the time we got this out here it was doing a dog leg and uh hate to to get this out as close as it is right now i'm super happy well aj i hope uh hope you enjoyed the video there uh this one was for you buddy just like i said at the beginning um mike shaft uh i was on the phone with mike today and i was actually it was coming right down to it and uh he was almost going to say don't bother with this cog here because he was thinking about replacing it but um, I by the time he got back to me I had already bored it out and, and I was ready to put the braze in it and, and I just kind of I said I wanted to try to improve it all right so um, from 34 thousands down to about five thousands um, I, I was able to improve the wobble he's gonna re replace that bearing and uh, and it, it'll be a lot better than it was um, this was not an extreme bend but it was sharp to the end and this took the brunt of it and the shaft actually bent the bore on on this so uh, whatever housing that this was in or whatever um, it it, <clears throat> it took a certain amount of pitch and then and then the flex inside so um, anyway we, we were able to get that out this is just unbelievable for how sharp that was and then that dog leg that was in there and getting all of that out of there was just i'm happy i was able to do it for mike anyhow um all right <clears throat> we're gonna go get this wrapped up and uh so we can get this sent off to mike and he can he can have it in uh in a couple days he's just over in new york all right until next time get it done